Hey guys, it's Salon here, back again with some more tank guides. This time talking about the Blood Death Knight. And as Blood, you're gonna primarily mitigate damage very differently than all other tanks, which is through self-healing, mainly from Death Strike, dealing damage and heals you for 20% of the damage taken in the last 5 seconds, consuming 45 runic power. Because of this, you often take more damage than the other tanks, but with all of your self-healing will determine your survival and mitigation as a tank, even reaching high enough levels to compete or surpass actual healers. On top of that, you also have other types of mitigation such as Bone Shield, decreasing all of your melee damage taken by 16% and increasing your haste by 10%, applied from Merrand, which deals damage and applies 3 charges, or 4 if it procs your artifact trait. Each melee hit is in turn gonna consume those charges of Bone Shield to reduce damage. Merrand also costs 2 runes that together with runic power are gonna form your 2 resources. Most of your abilities gonna cost runes to be usable, you have up to 6, and as you consume them it will generate runic power, 10 per 1 rune, which will in turn fuel your death strikes. Heart Strike will then be your filler, dealing reasonable damage, hitting two targets in front of you, causing one rune, and generating an extra 5 runic power, so a total of 15. Plus, it slows targets and heals you for 25% of the damage done due to the Blood Feast trait. Blood Plague will then be your dot, applied from either Death Caress, costing one rune, or Blood Boil, a free to use ability, on two charges. It also deals damage all around you, so it's your AoE ability and filler at the same time, since it's free, on a pretty short cooldown. Blood Plague will also heal you as it deals damage, so essentially a hot healing you over time that is easily kept up. Death and Decay is your placeable AoE ability, just dealing damage to all targets inside of its radius and making your heart strike hit three additional targets. Consumption is then your artifact ability, cleaving in front of you and healing you for the same amount of the damage that it did, plus provides you and four allies vampiric aura, increasing their leech for 20%. As for cooldowns, there's vampiric blood, increasing your HP for 50% or so, and healing received both from you and other outside sources by another 50%. Plus, you absorb damage 5 times equal to the damage of your blood plague that it did during its duration, called Umbilicus in Turnus, another trait. Dancing Rune Weapon increases your parry chance by 40%, plus creates two duplicates of your weapons, duplicating your damage and and having some pretty interesting effects on all of your other abilities, but more on that later. Anti-Magic Shell is your magic defensive cooldown, absorbing a big chunk of magical damage and makes you immune to its effects, plus the more it absorbs, it will generate runic power. Icebound Fortitude is just a damage reduction cooldown for 30% and makes you immune to stuns and other similar effects. As for passives, there's Crimson Scourge, Auto attack made to your blood plague at targets will proc a proc to make your death and decay free to use. And your mastery is blood shield. Every time you use death strike, you gain a small physical shield, depending on your stat percentage and how much it healed. Plus, while active, increases your leech by 25% and death strike damage by another 25%, due to your traits again. Leech just makes you heal for all the damage that you do based on the stat percentage that you have. As for rune forging, you want to apply apply Fallen Crusader, increasing your strength by 15% and healing you for 6% when it procs. In general, that will provide more healing than the bonus Stone Skin Gargoyle gives to your armor and stats. With that done, let's talk about your talents and then a more in-depth talk about your abilities. So let's just talk about your general build to use in Raiding and in Mythic Plus. Although they're not gonna differ too much and of course other interesting choices as well. So on the tier 1 for Raiding, Blood Drinker is generally the best, a new ability that you channel, dealing pretty high amounts of damage and healing you for the same amount. This is generally a great ability used practically on cooldown when Death's 
strike isn't available or just as an extra heal, remember that when you channel it, you still can parry and dodge and still use certain defensive cooldowns. Bloodworms can work, but they are too unreliable. You can never predict when you get them or when they actually burst to heal you since that's based on crits and the other one is based on your HP and just the timing of the set worm, making Blood Drinker a safer choice. Second tier, Rapid Decomposition tends to be best, increasing by 15% how fast Death and Decay ticks, and giving you one runic power every second while you stand inside of it. So you're gonna get 20 runic power total instead of just 10, generally it's gonna provide you with with more RP for more death strikes. Spectral deflection can work in some situations where attacks, so all attacks, not just auto attacks, deal 25% more damage of your maximum HP. It will absorb an extra bone shield, meaning reducing the damage taken by a total of 32%. This can work for fights where you see that you're gonna be getting hit hard either because you are under geared, it works great then, or you feel like like you need the extra insurance. Most of the time though, rapid decomposition will be better. Another way this talent can be used is with the tier 21 where consuming bone shield charges decreases the cooldown of dancing rune weapon. This can potentially improve that and in turn increase your DPS for more uses of that same CD but is very minimal. Heart of Ice is a very defensive choice, increasing the duration of ice pound fortitude by 2 seconds when you death strike during its duration. I never found this to be useful unless for some reason you feel like you need for fights with periods of heavy, heavy damage. Tier 3 Ossuary is your go-to to reduce the cost of death strike by 5 anytime you have 5 or more bone shield charges. Generally the perfect choice as you should always have 5 plus charges anyway, giving you more death strikes in the long run plus increases your RP, so runic power, by 10. Blood Tap gives you a rune on demand and consuming bone shield, so as you get hit, reduces its cooldown. In theory, they can be quite nice as they can fill you more heart strikes or merrands, which in turn gives you more runic power. In the end, it gives you another button to click and won't compete with Oshuary. Anti-magic barrier is never worth to take unless you need higher HP pool for some reason. Tier 4 Wrath Thirst is practically a must, as consuming runic power decreases the cooldown of vampiric blood, which is your most powerful cooldown. This talent is just gonna give it to you so frequently it would be a sin not to use it. Mark of Blood is okay, the healing provided isn't all that amazing, but it does work for your fellow tank, so be mindful of that, and Tombstone is just too lackluster to use, giving a shield by consuming bone shield charges, so you're sacrificing part of your mitigation to give you another type of mitigation. Generally not worth, although it can work for magic damage, but you can also make it work somewhat with the tier 21, again to reduce the Dancing Rune weapon cooldown even further, but again, Red Thirst should top it all the time. Next is mostly for utility, for raiding will depend on the fight, if you need of more mobility, March of the Damned is great to boost your Wraith walk to last for longer and removes roots and whatnot from you. If slows work and if in need of Corfin's Grasp, Tightening Grasp will then be best, so choose what you need. Following to your Fall Bulwark is the best by increasing your HP per Bone Shield active up to 10%. The other choices are never really worth it. Rune Tap decreases damage taken by 40%, which is great if you really need to prevent some hard hitting ability coming your way, but unless you happen to really, really need it, just use it if you have the Lego ring, so you can use both. Will of Necropolis, I never found any usefulness for it. And last year will depend on the situation. Blood Mirror tends to be your go-to, a mix between being a defensive and offensive type of cooldown, which 
for 10 seconds, 20% of your damage taken is turned back to the attacker. Essentially a 20% damage reduction for you, plus a little added damage on top. Purgatory is then a easier choice and safer if you're progressing through raids or going into hard keys and you want some insurance, as that will save you from death if you are healed. If you overgearing or you feel confident, go for Blood Mirror instead. Bonestorm can be pretty good, it costs 100 runic power for its entire duration or less, but will last for well less, and it will give you a pretty strong AoE ability that will also heal you as it deals damage at the expense of losing the strikes. So for raiding you're generally never going to use it unless in a heavy hat fight and you want some more damage. As for Mythic Plus, all will stay pretty much, just some slight changes on the tier 1. Blood Drinker is still perfectly usable as it's really powerful, although Heartbreaker can be useful for your Heart Strike to generate an extra 2 RP per target hit, so up to 10 extra if you hit 5 targets. That said, it's not a must, but it's great if you prefer it over Blood Drinker. Then here, most of the time, you're gonna use Tightening Grasp, so you can use Gorfins more often, which is amazing in dungeons, plus the slow for death and decay makes it great for kiting if you need, or just better general control of the mobs. I'll talk more about that later. Tremble before me can be interesting as your death and decay will add this really short fear like stun on them. Now, most of the time isn't needed, but if you're going into a group that has very little amount of CC, it can work great. I personally love it when it works and it happens to stop dangerous casts and whatnot, but most of the time Fighting Grass will be your go-to. Then on that last year, Bonestorm is also a personal favorite of mine, working pretty goddamn well here. The sacrifice of Death Strike is fine here since you're gonna be using it to hit multiple targets, really ranking up on that heal effect. Not only that, its damage can be pretty good on big trash packs. In my opinion, far more useful than the other two, but useless in boss fights, so take that in mind. The other two choices are fine if you don't want Bone Storm, and that covers it all. Now let's talk about your rotation or just priorities of your abilities in order to mitigate damage properly as blood and of course deal damage in the process as most of your abilities will do so, even your mitigation, and then your cooldowns and other prominent abilities. So like I said previously, your gameplay will for the most part fall to the management of your wounds and runic power as most of your abilities don't have cooldowns and their use is based on your management of the same resources, especially Death Strike, which is going to be your main way to mitigate. Besides that, all of your abilities can do so somewhat depending on your leech stat or other similar effects that benefit your leech, making it a pretty powerful addition to blood as then even Marorans and stuff like that can heal you. So first for single targets and basically how to build runic power, then how to mitigate, and of course the changes for multi-target. So your main priority will be to first keep up your bone shield up all the time. So for that, you're gonna be using Marrow Rat. The charges here can stack up up to 10, and to be in a safe position, and because of your ossuary talent, you want to keep your bone shield above 5 charges all the time. And as those charges are consumed, they will start reducing incoming damage passively, plus giving you more haste, which is so important for you to reduce global cooldowns and increase how fast your wounds regenerate. So in the beginning, using two Marorans should be your go-to. After that, you want to apply your Blood Plague, which is also gonna heal you over time, plus gives you that chance on the death and decay free procs. So you use Blood Boil once. Now, you could have used a death scratch on pull just to apply it, but if you do, you're losing a rune for nothing as Blood Boil applies it anyway and is free, plus using it now will get the cooldown rolling so you can maximize its uses, especially if you have the Lego shoulders, where Blood Boils increases the healing of your death strike. After that, you will either fill in with Heart Strike just to continue consuming those runes for more runic power for the Death Strikes and obviously deal more damage 
and threat. Death and Decay will take priority above it, but only if you have the Crimson Scourge proc where it makes it free. You can choose it to use it without the proc as it can technically generate more runic power than Hard Strike, but it will deal less damage. Plus the proc is so frequent, you don't really need to anyway. While at the same time, you want to weave in your Blood Wilds whenever you can, so when out of runes or if you add 3 runes. Why? Because your runes will generate 3 at a time, always. So if you dare, feel free to use a blood boil if near the 2 charges. You want to try and aim to have that cooldown taking all the time, but obviously not taking priority over your actual mitigation. After this, your priorities will just depend on the following simple rules. Is your bone shield below 6 charges? If so, use Marirand. Do you have Death and Decay proc? If so, use it. Or are you at a safe place with runes and you can use a Blood Boil? Or if finally you need to dump runes because you have too many of them or you are in a desperate need of a Death Strike and need runic power? If so, spam that Heart Strike, alright? So with that now in mind, when to use that strike? Well, it's all about the timing. One use for it is just to dump runic power, so if you win an easy fight and you just keep building runic power and more runic power, and you don't really need the heal but you can overcap, use it anyway. You actually have a trait when you overheal with it, it increases your HP, so it's actually good to use it even without needing the heal if near the cap of runic power only. Plus stacking that bone shield as well, giving you those buffs from those traits. Besides that, you're gonna be using it to heal you. Obviously, as you get more gear, especially haste, the usage of Death Strike are gonna get easier and easier, and you're just gonna generate runic power so quickly that the management of it gets easier and easier. But most of the time, you won't be using it after a hard hit or hard damage where your HP just stepped, so whenever below 70% of HP or so. You can actually use add ons to track how much. The death strike is gonna heal you, but in general it's all about timing and just using when you feel like you need the heal. So don't be afraid to use it, but don't be using it mindlessly in case something big is coming your way. But most of the time you're just gonna be healing you when you feel right, other times you might be stockpiling runic power for something big coming. Another thing to be reminded of is that when you use a Death Strike or even a Mare Rand, the ability itself, not the Bone Shield buff, it counts as an active mitigation, so a little buff that appears for 3-4 seconds or so. This is going to be important for bosses like the last boss of Naltharian's Lair, where you need to have active mitigation to avoid the kickback mechanic, so remember that, which is easily forgettable as a Blood Decay, as other classes have a more prominent active mitigation. Blood Shield finally also counts towards it as well. And remember, it only works for physical damage, so against magical users it will just stay there, which in turn is just gonna give you 25% leech and 25% more damage on that strike, which will equal also more healing. As for the Lego Shoulders that give you that buff on Death Strike every time you use a Blood Boil, don't plan too much around it, doing your normal rotation or priorities rather should net you always 2-3 to three stacks before every Death Strike that you do in a general sense. As for Blood Drinker, you want to use as much as you can also, now it will take priority above Heart Strike and about the same as Death Strike. The idea with it is that you can use it in two ways, one is that you want to heal but don't have enough RP for Death Strike, so use it as an emergency healing, or you need to heal but you're saving that Death Strike because you know something more dangerous is coming your way, and Death Strike will be better to use there instead of a Blood Drinker. So in those situations, you're gonna use it. Overall, you should aim to use it on cooldown, but do try to aim for moments where you at least need some HP. And lastly, consumption. It's used in single targets, never mattered much. It's free, so you'd use it as 
a filler and in single target the heal isn't all that great. However, it now triggers Vampiric Aura, giving 20% leech to 4 allies. So either in a raid or dungeons, you should aim consumption when a boss ability is coming where it damages everyone or during heavy damage moments in the fight. That's 20% leech really ranks up on the DPS, healing them for a pretty good amount, so remember that, but obviously if you're feeling a little bit selfish or if you really need, you can use it just for yourself so you gain 20% leech, so you, all of your abilities will then heal you for 20% of all the damage that you do. In multi-targets, the idea stays all the same really, so either in Mythic Plus or whatever it might be, be your Heart Strike Cleave, Death and Decay or Blood Boil, all of those abilities you use in single target, your idea should never really change. What changes is in the beginning, so when you're pulling, you might only go for one Marrow Rand and then a Blood Boil to grab aggro quickly or just pull with a Blood Boil or a Death and Decay to once again grab aggro. Consumption can also heal for a lot more here, so use it as an emergency or for the group again, but after that, follow the same priorities and everything will work out fine. As for Bone Storm, you just want to mostly use it when you add 100 runic power, so you want to stack that up high and then just use it and you basically will be undefeatable as that will heal you and you will also be able to compete with a lot of the DPS, which is great. As for cooldowns, Vampiric Blood will be the most prominent, it will increase your HP and healing, so idea with it is basically as a sort of, oh shit, I got hit really hard, or I'm getting hit really hard, so you just pop it with a death strike quickly after it, and bam, you are immediately topped. It really can be OP at the times, making you practically unkillable. The cooldown is really short due to Wrath Thirst, so feel free to use anytime you need that extra heal. You also get the Umbilicus in turn, shield, so you can use that to your advantage to soak up some more future damage, but most of the time you're not gonna think too much about it. Icebound Fortitude has a similar use, just decreases damage taken, so once again, use when you know a really big bad ability is coming your way, so right before it comes, or you are getting hit really hard to soften up the blow or blows. Rune tap kind of falls in the same use here. If you're using it right before something big is coming, remember that rune tap doesn't last for too long, so you need to time that right. Anti-magic shell, the same, but this time for magic damage. Try to reuse it as much as you can for more runic power or save it for something big that is magical. And finally, that sounded really Disney-like. And finally, Dancing Rune Weapon is mostly a DPS cooldown, so if you know a fight is easy, you're gonna be using it as such, just to increase your damage from your duplicate weapons. If not, you can use it to parry auto attacks, so blocking completely the damage. Mostly auto attacks, but do some special abilities can also be parried. That said, there's also other interesting uses with it in the way it interacts with your other abilities. One is that if you're planning on using a Vampiric Blood, you can use it first, then a Blood Boil. And what will happen is that those two extra weapons from the Dancing Rune weapon will apply two extra weaker Blood Plagues, boosting the Umbilicus Internus shield. If with the Lego shoulders, it will also give you three stacks of the buff. Okay. The other is just to build a lot of runic power quickly, as your heart strikes with it active, gonna generate 10 extra. As for Merrands, it will instantly apply 9 to 10 stacks of bone shield, meaning you can use it for emergency bone shields as a drastic measure. And finally, if you have the tier 21, when Dancing Rune weapons depletes, you gain a rune regeneration buff, so you can use it in preparation for something big coming as well, allowing you to get more runes, meaning more runic power, meaning more death strikes, alright? So there's tons of different uses with Dancing Rune weapon, so try to keep in mind all of them and use it appropriately. And that covers it. Now, besides all of that, there's another thing which is general control. Now, as a Blood Decay, you have little to no mobility, so your Wraith Walk uses needs to be well planned. That said, in dungeons or raid fights where it works, your grips can be amazing. Not only is your second taunt, you pull all of those nasty ranged mobs which are a pain to all other tanks. In combination with Core Friends, you have so much control in dungeons, plus your slows and stuff, it compensates for the lack of mobility tremendously. Putting all the mobs hugged 
together for easier AoE is something that you should aim for all the time as a blood decay. All right, so use all of them grips and control all of the mobs as best you can. Remember that you also have a stun which can serve as a second interrupt as well, so don't forget about that. And that covers it all. As for stats and then to wrap up, so stats in the bloody guy are pretty straightforward. Haste makes wonders. With your bone shield you basically gain 10% extra all the time, but after that getting more and more haste is always amazing for the reduction of global cooldowns and faster runes for more runic power and in turn mitigation. Versatility comes soon after just so it helps you reduce damage taken since as blood you're gonna take more damage than all the other tanks which can prove difficult in certain fights. Verse will help smooth that out. After that crit tends to be good as will just increase damage that you do, healing through leech and your parry chance. Lastly or equivalent to crits is mastery, so boosting your blood shield which isn't all that powerful so it's not worth stacking. The attack power is good as that will increase the strike healing but like it not worth stacking. That said, item level should be your priority most of the time unless you're really low on verse or haste as that will increase your HP pool and strength which just increases increases the strike healing, which is based on attack power as well as the damage taken, plus the HP pool allows you to soak up bigger hits, plus it's always great to get some of that leech. And that covers it all, if you're looking for add-ons and whatnot, look down below in the description, as always guys, thank you for watching, like and subscribe for more videos like this, have a fantastic day everyone, and I'll see you all next time, see ya!